but today we're going to focus on the skills hub so we'll zoom in to a global dashboard right so we talked about now we're getting to that first question is like what's the state of our enterprise skills so steve let's let's talk about some of the the questions that or sub questions that we can start to answer with this type of dashboard or these types of reports great great place to start and remember where i said earlier it's that ceo knowing their workforce and if we think about let's see these top two dashboards on the the top the middle on the right we look at skills rated this year so i've got very healthy skills rated this year and there's there's two components to skills it's one saying you have the skill it's the next piece rating it and, and I, I like to use again i speak to these these phrases and the sponsors but i like to use the term tagging rating calibrating validating so tagging is to say that you have the skill rating is an individual self-rating calibrating is for other people like managers and peers to rate an individual on their skill to determine if they're demonstrating those right behaviors and then validating using assessments quizzes tests certifications to validate that individual's level of knowledge within a skill and of course now we're driving into the opportunities or the mobility and so i've, I've had these opportunities to really effectively demonstrate my skill in a real scenario and so now there's mechanisms to capture there but if we're just looking at those first two tagging and rating um or tagging rating the first three tagging rating and calibrating so if i see the skills that were rated this year one mm -hmm. of the things i can look at is compared right next to that the skills calibrated this year so the individuals that have rated their skills have those how many of those skills have been rated by either a manager or peer depending on what your organization is set up and so now i can start to look at you know individuals how social um, am i talking about my skills how much am i asking people to rate how are managers engaged in rating their employee skills and then being able to drill down by month by week and more importantly being able to compare it against the previous year to see how you're moving along with that but these are things that can help drive your strategy especially again i talk about that that important piece of the manager engagement as being that development coach that manager really helping to guide their employees and so being able to compare individuals rating their skills and manager rating their skills this is a pretty healthy look if we were just to use this example data so we know that managers are highly engaged that that was what we were the metric we're tracking in rating their skill or rating the people in their organization's skills so that's one aspect of it um just to dive down a little bit deeper, I'll, I'll look at that that kind of that highly rated skills. And I think for every organization, what are the most popular skills uh, across our company? And what's that progression over time? Are we seeing that skill volume is increasing? And there, there's two different metrics there that we like to look at. It's skill volume and it's skill proficiency. So do your people have the skills and at what proficiency level do they have them? And so things that we can start to look at, these highly rated skills, and I can see over time, where is my volume ticking up or down? You know, I can overlay this with uh, average uh, skill ratings and I can start to then look at if I have skill volume going up, but I have proficiency, which is staying flat or it's actually going down. It means that I have people that are adding this skill because it's important to them or it's valuable to them. But we as a learning organization may not be providing enough learning content to allow people to increase in proficiency. So one more thing I want to introduce here is that a lot of times when you have data you're, you're measuring you're building you're analyzing and you're building insights it's not necessarily that you're going to produce the answers but what this data is going to do is going to allow you to formulate these hypotheses right to ask the questions and then to seek the answers through the data that you have so these are things that we're looking at why are these the most and why are these the most highly rated skills and why am i seeing maybe this growth in volume or proficiency or why am i seeing a decline or why am I seeing a mismatch? And uh, last but not least, in this lower right-hand corner here, the skills leaderboard and the, the confidence by population. I think this is one thing that we look at. And I, you know, I, I've had um, data scientists, uh, you know, when, when I when I start to talk about skill data, challenge me on this because it's the validity of the data. And, and you think about that, and that's very right. You know, if I'm comparing proficiency. Uh, between two skills, or if I'm proficiency between two different audiences in my organization if uh, one group is reporting maybe the highest level of a skill highest proficiency la uh, level of a skill but it represents only 10 percent of that audience then i don't have a lot of confidence yeah. but if i have another group that's maybe at that midpoint uh, for that average skill rating however we're looking at 80 plus percent of that population that has rated that skill 
I have much greater confidence. So this example, this skills leaderboard is looking at the people that have followed a skill, which gives me great from numbers, but what I wanna compare that is the percentage of the population. And just an example here with the data, I can see that you know Midwest sales kind of right there in the middle, you know, 57.9% of that population is following that skill. Uh, now that could be deceiving if I was just looking at the number that was following the skill versus looking at the percentage of the population. Now I compare that to accounting up at the top, smaller representative audience. However, it's a larger percentage of the population. So those are things that we're saying to perhaps take a look at and start comparing at not only the skill volume and the skill proficiency, but the percentage of the population. That's going to give you one, confidence in your data, but that's going to also let you look into the engagement of that group and which areas do you want to engage with these target skills to not only capture that data, but to look to see where you can improve that data. Uh, great, you know, great points here. And, and Brandon, I'll, I, I've, I've spoken probably uh, pretty deeply in this, but I'll turn it back over to you to get us moving. I think one of my favorite things when you talked about the highly skills and we're, we're, we're looking at the trends over time and not only what does the data show us, but what questions does it inspire, right? Because that's the human element of inspiring curiosity of, of whether it be a manager or whether it be a director or an analyst being willing to see something and then start to peel layers back and what does that actually show, right? So so maybe, maybe we have a lot of people following Python, but they're not rating it because maybe Brandon decided he didn't need to learn Python because it was just a pipe dream at some point in time. And that's, that's a true story.